hello. Hey. Different day, different dollar. Different dollar. No, it's not. I just made it up on the spot. You're welcome. You said, (laughs) Adam told me before we got on camera to bring the energy today. You're welcome, he says. (laughs) Make shit up as we go. All right. It's day two of the syndicate. (laughs) That reminds me, my first job ever was at GameStop uh, when I was like 16. And there was a guy who came in every day. Did he make up on the dot? And every time he would say, same day, different shit. <laughs> <laughs> was he a country boy? Yeah. Yeah. The way you frame that. Way. It's funny because Chris has an accent already, yeah. but he goes even extra when he's trying to I impersonate yell. somebody. He did that with Matt. Same day. Podcast is pretty awesome. Yeah. You got a good country accent. I want to continue this little conversation, but the, the audience doesn't want to. All right. Well, this is day one of the syndicate semifinal. Day two. Day two, bro. No, day man. two, man. <laughs> Same day. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> uh, so we, we had some really good performances. I think some people that they had to overcome some fears, which maybe we can highlight. I think that was pretty yeah. cool, especially yeah. with the legless rope climb workout for some of the females in the field. And the team continues to hang on the bubble right that now. That team, man, they, <laughs> they love to uh, they love to make it high pressure situations, <laughs> yes. don't they? Yeah. But they're but, still fun to watch. I mean, the their level of teamwork, even in this field with the Mayhem teams there and all the other teams who've been around this for a while, like their communication, their teamwork, their support of each other has just been awesome Huge. to see all weekend long. Well, that's one of the things that you see on the worm workouts. They yeah. always do so well. I mean, they're top three in almost every worm workout, but part of that is because they communicate really well. They work yeah. together well as a team. Uh, and I think maybe the coaching around them too has kind of helped set themselves up, not, not taking anything away from them, but just communicating on how they move from one thing to the next. Yeah, I mean, there's coaches on the team. I mean, Mike, Mike and me yeah. are there. Brandy's a coach. Like They are very um, intellectual, methodical about their approach, but being able to have somebody who is objective who can like be a sort of middle ground between two different opinions sure. is still invaluable, even with that team setup. So you know, Ryan and Perrin have been doing a great job with them for sure. Uh, going back to your first point where you're talking about them being on the bubble, Mike, I was talking to him after the last workout, they were about to head back and he's like, you know what? There's a lot of pressure being in, you know, fourth or fifth place. He's like, but I was talking to Brandy and I was like, it's better here than in 18th or 20th place. Like at least yeah. we're in the spot where yeah. we have pressure on us to qualify. It's in their hands and that's what you want. Yeah. Like if you have aspirations of being a games level team, you want it to be in your hands yeah. going into the final day and that's what they've got. So it's a lot of fun watching them on the worm, uh, how much time they make up against the field. You yeah. know, mayhem is on a different level at this point. They, yeah. They're just really good. With it's everything. a combination of teamwork and individual capacity when you For get sure. to that level. Yeah. Yeah. But watching them, they kind of fell behind a little bit on, let's say the chest bars and the chest bar overhead squat workout. They'd get to the worm and they would make up yeah. 20, 30 seconds every yeah. round on the clean and jerks. Yeah. It's something else to also have the levels of patience necessary to know, all right, we can afford to like take our time here because we're going to make it up somewhere else. You don't have to force the issue too early, which in and of itself is a skill inside of the sport. Where is your separator? Yeah. Like you talk all the time about separation value. I think that knowing where your separator is and not trying to force the issue, even if somebody else is like pulling away too, like earlier than you expected, For sure. stay patient. It's all right. This isn't the time right now. This isn't our race. They do a really good job of that. Speaking of that, I think that that really showed itself with the individuals today, both in the legless rope climb yeah. and then in the longer workout, the wall ball, ski, handstand walk, GH, the legless yeah. rope climb workout though even that everyone was going super fast and the times were incredible but it was fun to watch our female athletes know where they were and not get pulled into a race early yeah. but then be able to kind of dig late like Alexis did a great job of that she was probably in what fourth place in the heat for a while fourth and- place in the heat at, at least I think at some point at one point early on it was like fifth or sixth yeah. and we talked about it before it's like you see a couple of the times from Tori and you see a couple of times from Lowlands and you're like, Oh, people are really moving. Yeah. Um, and it's still, you don't, you don't race the first three, you don't nope. race the first five, you save it for the very end. And it's still like the other athletes they What I always tell Alexis is they're what they're doing out there, their execution, it informs your decisions in the moment, but it doesn't dictate it. Yes. So like the time is so much faster than what we did in practice and it's informing her. It's telling her, all right, I got to keep a little bit of a higher turnover here, but I'm not going to allow what they're doing to dictate what I'm going to do inside of this moment. And she did a great job of that. So it's not sprinting back and forth on the shuttle runs, making sure you get a nice deliberate jump on the start of each one of those rib climbs, but like just sticking to your game plan, even amongst all of that pressure and chaos that people just running around with their heads cut off. Yeah. It was really cool to see. And she 
paced it perfectly where on nine and 10 rounds, nine and 10, yeah. that's where she passed a couple girls yeah. and then ended up getting, I, I don't know what her actual placing was in the workout fifth. overall, fifth overall yeah. with what, four minutes, <laughs> like they yeah, were going so fast, super. And, and the same thing, Faith Stewart, she crushed that workout. She PR'd by over a minute. She was 411. Time, 411, yeah. finished seventh, which obviously is still a great finish. But when she finished that, she was in the first heat. I was thinking that'll be a top five time. Yeah. <laughs> Some of these girls are incredible, but it to goes see, to see like see Christy Aramo go. Yeah. It was, what awesome. was it, like three, 17, 319. Yeah, like that's one of those ones like, all right, just go let her do her. <laughs> exactly. Like, she was in a situation where she had to do that. Like yeah. she was in like 22nd or 21st. Right. So she had to take a risk there. But that's one of those other ones where it's like, all right, let it inform you. You know that somebody can hold a speed that you probably didn't expect, but don't let it dictate it. Don't try and chase yeah. her down. Let her go do her thing. Do your own thing. Yeah. Then yeah. we also had Brandon flex that hamstring. How oh yeah, is it, it's got an, it the, the light. How about <laughs> this? I just did some curls. The, I was going to reach Hold in between on, let's your legs. A zoom. Can you? Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Allison um, did freaking awesome in that workout. So we talked about it a little bit afterwards. So on day one, event two, she won her heat, was out ahead Crushed for most it. of it, like got a lot of good air time. That's just a good feeling when your sure. heat walk away with a big smile on and your face. And she paced it so well. For yeah. Her. Um, event three, legless rope climb. It wasn't one that anybody would say like, it's going to be a great event for Allison, right? Like she's not going to win the heat. She's not going to be probably top three, top four in the heat, but that what she did out there was a bigger victory than event two. She didn't finish inside the time cap in practice and she did eight flat out there. Yeah. She stayed calm. She stayed steady. She trusted her technique and taking more than three minutes off of your practice time when it's out there, when all the pressure's on you, that was amazing. That's to what watch. I was going to say. It's almost 50% of the time. It like, was crazy. incredible. It that's was such crazy how much better it was today. Yeah. And it's just one of those things where like, that's the kind of athlete that like we're proud to have on our team who can step up under all that pressure. Sure. It's really cool to see. I think part of that too is she's been able to do that on site where she can compete and lose workouts or win yeah. workouts, but you learn to kind of handle like your own internal emotions during yeah. the workout. Yeah. And she's really improved there. Yeah. I, she, she told me in the build up to semifinals, like how mentally challenging it can be working out next to Sarah, working out next to Alexis, where it's like, they're winning all the time. Yeah. Like you're not beating them very much, but you get used to it. Then we also had Annalise Moore in the yeah. same, she was in the first heat with faith. Yeah. Um, I know she was a little bit disappointed with the way that that finished, yeah. uh, but that's the risk I think that you have to take in competition. And one of the things that she said is she wanted to kind of push herself to see if she could move into that second heat. You have to walk the line. You yeah. have to walk the line at some point, because if not, you're going to look back and be like, man, I wish I would have given a little bit more. And to, to be out there on the floor and be willing to take those risks, man, I just, I got a lot of respect for that. Yeah. Cause I know that it's, it's tough to do that in that moment. Cause you know that you're putting yourself out there and if it happens to not, to not pan out, it's like, you're just stuck out there on your own. But to, to see Annalise doing it at such a young age, like we know that she has high aspirations, high ambitions sure. in the sport, and she's got a heck of a future ahead of her. So the hope would be that doing things like that and learning the lesson that comes from it is just going to make her even better for having done it. Yeah. And one of the other things I was going to say is it also just is so dependent in a workout like that with how your judge calls good reps and bad reps. There sure. were a couple, I think, that she ended up kind of blowing up a little bit towards the end because the judge made her re touch the beam. Mm. So if you're holding on, especially if you're someone that's not great at rope climbs and you have to hold on and then retouch, that can blow you up. And I think that happened to her a little bit. Oh man, that's, yeah. that makes it 10 times harder yeah. right there. So it just, I yeah. mean, it, this is a sport where everything's so fast. And if a judge calls something, you get a no rep or, or you get a good rep. I mean, it can help you or hurt you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some of the compete guys did that. Yeah. One. So it's another example of how fast some of these athletes are now. Uh, Evan Rogers did it in two minutes and 54 seconds. And when he was going, I actually told him in this in the back, so he won't feel bad about this, but I was like, man, he looks like he's going slow because one of the guys that was next to him won the workout. What he's the fastest in the world right now at two forty something. <laughs> he was just running back and forth, but you know, 254 is just an unbelievable Yeah, time. but to think that 254 in that light looks slow is crazy. <laughs> I know. It's crazy. Yeah, some guys are amazing. Uh, and then Matthias got 259, I think, in the workout. Amazing. So also sub three, which was his goal. Uh, I, I mean, but it was, it was really fun to watch both of them go out because they both said that they were a little nervous with the rope climb. Yeah. They both knew that they were good, but they weren't sure about how hard to push. Yeah. And they... Like you mentioned, they kind of stayed right at that threshold the entire time and then kicked the yeah. last couple of rounds. It's just hard to find where that line is because a workout like that is just a potential landmine and it could be for anybody. For sure. We saw it in Alexis's heat that I think it was Colin Brander who was next to her was eight to 10 seconds ahead of Flying. her for the whole workout until the very last rep yep. and just missed that one and then missed the next one. She would have been second on that. Yep. And then she dropped down to like 14th. It changes the whole weekend. Yeah. So yeah. You, you, walking that line, I think is... 
a skill that comes with experience, but it's also sometimes, man, you just don't know where it's going to be. Yeah. And then speaking of pacing that last workout, I mean, it, as long as it was and as grindy as it was, I think it did come down at least for the top females and males, figuring out how to kind of control your own pacing because yeah. the tens, the twenties, and even to some extent, the, the beginning of the thirties, it's really easy to start chasing people that are way out ahead. Sure. Those that kind of stayed in their own lane and knew, okay, here's my separator to your point earlier, that allowed them to kind of kick in the 40s and 50s. Yeah. I mean, you have to think about that workout in the context of the total volume. For sure. Right? You get through 10, 20, 30, that's 60 reps of a 150 rep workout for all of those movements. Yep. You're not even halfway done when yep. you get through the 30. And I told you before, I was like, you watch people's face when they yep. hit that 30 and you're going to see a lot of panic and expressions. I saw it. And you saw it. <laughs> yeah. People are going to get smacked in the face when they hit that 30 because they're thinking, oh, I'm three rounds into a five round workout. No, yeah, not even you're close. 20% into a, like a, yeah. a monster of a workout. So yeah, knowing the context of the workout and knowing where the separation is going to be on a global level on that one, it's not 10, 20, 30. It's being able to hold onto a pace on 30, 40, 50. Yeah. What we saw on the female side, I think was a lot of it came down to your ski pacing across yeah. the board. And if you could maintain a higher threshold than, or a higher pacing average than maybe some of the other females yeah. in the field, especially in the forties and fifties. Man, it's crazy how high that bar has gotten. I think that I, the camera panned over to Ariel's ski monitor at one point. I think she was in her forties and it was at 1050. Yeah. Super so impressive. She, that's her threshold. That's her threshold pace. If you're at your 40 cows and you're at 1050, like, I think that Lex was around like 950 at that point. I think Allison was around 900, 950, and they're both really, really good on the machine. Really good. So just to know, like, that's where the sport's going. Like, it's still evolving at this pace. It's just incredible to me, but it's also exciting. Yeah. It's exciting to know that we haven't really asymptoted yet. <laughs> He loves that word. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's what the conversation I had with Faith after. I, 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 this tokes. was... Yes, about that and then about the pacing and the workout. <laughs> to me, that was her victory of the weekend because she was really worried about the skier and the wall balls. She's a smaller athlete. She yeah. weighs 127 pounds and is five foot nothing. And so <laughs> a, a 10 foot wall ball and the skier, those can be dangerous if you're competing against the best in the world. Yeah. Speaking I, of dangerous, I was filming Faith from right above the railing where she was doing her ski erg. I'll be dang if I didn't think I was about to drop my camera <laughs> oh, oh, right my. on her head. I was like, oh, I probably should have a strap for this shot. <laughs> if you're on YouTube, you'll be seeing uh, that Yes, now. please. Um, but I thought she handled it really well. The thing is, is like, you know, her pace in that workout is 850. And yeah. so it, as good as that was, and that's such a huge victory for her yeah. and breaking up the wall balls the way she did was she executed to me flawlessly for where she's at. Yeah. The reality is, is that some girls were holding a thousand and that was the difference in that workout for her. Yeah, no, it's such a huge separator, 150 skier cows. I mean, not all the girls got through 150, but yeah. like even what it is a hundred, I guess such a big separator for sure. 50, hundred extra calories per hour. Yeah. Yeah. It is fun though, still to watch. You can see the kind of those little things that you work on in training with your athletes and say, yeah. okay, here's the pacing model that we want to hold. Here's what we're going to do. Yeah. And sometimes it's hard to, trust either a coach or for the athlete to trust themselves with certain pacing models. But to see that like actually play out in a workout was a lot of fun. Yeah. The interesting part about that was so Ariel's skiing at 1050, probably a hundred calories per hour more than Alexis was. And Alexis was almost making the time back on the GHD. Yep. So the wall ball, she got a couple of no reps on the wall ball. She broke them more than Ariel did, but the speed of the GHDs was a huge separator for her. And she stayed calm enough on the ski to allow it to be a separator, yeah. which is another one of those like, just execution things. Exactly. Stay patient where you need to find your separation where you can. Yeah. I was surprised that there were fewer girls than I thought that broke the wall balls. Yeah. Uh, at least early on. Yeah. I, I don't see, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe if you're just really good, you can go unbroken, but I just don't see the bonus of trying to go unbroken and really grind reps there and then slow everything else down. Yeah. I mean, especially well with wall balls specifically, that's such an easy movement to break and get back in. Yeah. You don't really lose too much of a rhythm. If anything, that little bit of like flush of new blood that you get in your arms, it helps. For and sure. then you'd like bite off another five, bite off another eight, bite off another 10. I just like those breaks. I think they make Me a lot too. of sense, especially in a 25 minute workout where the goal isn't necessarily huge sets. It's constant momentum. Exactly. It's just keeping your momentum. And keeping pace on the GHDs and the handstand walk, which the handstand walk even did play a role. There were a couple of girls that got no rep towards the end or like right on the edge. I actually, yeah. Allison. Allison, yeah. yeah. So she actually ended up filing a dispute on this, which okay. I don't, I don't know what the ruling is going to be. Um, so I the, actually missed this footage. Yeah. Thing. So you actually, uh, but you have footage of Alexis doing the exact yeah. same thing 
thing. So they have a they chest. They ride together, those girls. Yeah, they did the same. <laughs> they did the same thing. They're best friends. Um, the You'll chest, be viewing Alexis in slow mo now. <laughs> but <laughs> the, chest, <laughs> the chest piece at the end of the lane that they have to move after every round right. of handstand walks on the very first round is set up right on the end of the yellow line where they have to get past. It's inside of their lane but it's right on the yellow yes. line. And so as they're both handstand walk, finishing their last 40 feet unbroken, both of their right hands hit that marker. Now the marker is on the other side of the yellow line. So Allison's hand hits it, comes down, not past the yellow line, the judge no reps her. She mm. has to go all the way back, do that 40 feet unbroken. Alexis's hand hits it. Chris is going to show the video of it. So her hand still happens to make it up past the yellow line. It's a good rep. But the fact that you can't hit it like the judge told her you didn't make it past the yellow line, but the markers on the other side of the yellow line and she yeah. ran into it. So I'm not sure what the ruling is there. Maybe she should have been a little bit more aware. I don't know. I feel like it's kind of a <laughs> petty judging. Yeah. Like it's just a decision that could have gone either way. I think. Yeah. That's it's a brutal like next way. Next year, just put the pylons somewhere. Just else. move it back Agreed. six inches. Like that way they can fit their hand there. <laughs> it's it's a Unless relatively you're supposed, easy Are you fix. supposed to be able to know where you're walking? All they said, all they told them was stay within their lane, and she was within her lane. It's just that the marker was also there. Just yeah. unfortunate. Yeah. yeah. With, with that said, I think she still handled herself well. She focused. She kind of refocused. To herself. be able to refocus Get after that it. was really really yeah. good, and that's what I told her. And the way she finished, like <laughs> it's. You know, some people may be like, oh, what's the point of running back and getting one cow in the ski? Or I don't even know if she got that cow. No, she got three pulls. I don't think that she got a cow. But still, I, like, I appreciate that so much of somebody that like, yeah, likes to be a grinder of like her effort to stay in the workout. And then she finished that last handstand walk in. I don't know if you have film of this, Chris, but like she sprinted yeah. all the way back down. Yeah. You know, ran that four three forty and got the ski here. But it was just really cool to see because it's very easy. I've been in that situation where you get a no rep and then everyone passes you in a workout that maybe you thought you were gonna do a little bit it better. It can be and, deflating. And yeah, yeah. you can just if you up. allow it to be. Exactly. Yeah. So that she, was cool. To she see. didn't allow it to be. She she stayed in it. She kept biting off chunks. And especially for a movement for her that historically has been a weakness. And we've done so much work on her handstand walks to have 40 feet unbroken taken away from you when you know that it's not necessarily like a huge strength, but still have the confidence to go back in and kick back up. Like, so she ended up doing 360 feet of handstand walks today and in 40 foot unbroken chunks, huge victory. Yeah. And especially when you got one taken away. Yeah, I agree. And then the guys, Matthias and Evan, uh, Evan crushed it. He was, um, I think two twenty four fifty ish somewhere in there. So he just finished under the cap, nice. but he also is one that got no repped on his handstand walk. So he would have finished it like 24 minutes. Oh man. The last step came back and then was able to kick back up. Matthias, uh, almost finished underneath the cap, but I think they both did really well. So it's, I mean, it's cool. It's cool to see these guys that, you know, a year ago, they were both fighting for spots and now they're here. Yeah. They're in the arena you and they're mix it they're up with the big boys. Yeah. yeah. No, cool. Evan has been really impressive. I haven't got a chance to talk to Matthias yet, but watching what he did with the lift yesterday and then watching him get close to finishing so a day is yeah. really cool. Yeah. He's uh he's a super, both those guys are really awesome. And though just the way that they compete, I think they handled themselves well, which is nice like to see people as a part of the brand that are out yeah. there competing hard. Yeah. I just, you know, I'm a big fan of Evan because he had a Chick-fil-A shirt on today. I agree. Yeah. Something nice about that. Yeah. yeah. Amen. <laughs> did y'all talk about Alexa? Alexis on that workout? Did I blink out? <laughs> Alexis did that workout? She did, yeah. Oh, yeah. Did she finish it? She, she was, was close, bro. she was maybe like 20 feet. No, so, less than that, maybe. So close. She was looking. I, so she, she's, she went she, through She the, tried to stay unbroken on her last handstand yeah. walk because she heard the announcer counting it down. And what's crazy about Alexis is when she does her handstand walks, she has a lot more thoracic rotation than most people. She spends she more time on one hand. And so when she's walking on that last bit, and I don't know if you'll see it in the video, she is constantly, when she would rotate, she'd look to see the line, couldn't see it. She'd look to see the line, couldn't see it. But she's like gazing the whole time. Yeah. It's like, how are you this good on your Just hands? It's ridiculous. Really good. Yeah. My favorite thing in our camps is the handstand walk seminar yeah. where Mia basically uses her as the <laughs> handstand walk demo. And it's like, wow. That's Mia wants a, a picture of her hanging in the gym. It sh- I mean, we should have one. It's like really walk. good positions. Yeah. Instead, so, oh, the, we have her. the big banner. Yeah, she wants it. Her yeah. from the it would side make it would us. make me as a camp clinics go that much smoother. Just look up here at look, this banner. Do that. <laughs> do that. Do that thing up there. What's I think what's funny about it though is that everyone thinks that they're in that position, and no <laughs> one is in that position. I'm in that position. No, you might not be, not, but I know that I'm in that position. Not that position. So yeah. where's everybody at that we know of at the end of day two? You might want to pull it yeah, up. Yeah, I'm gonna get pull, it wrong. I'd I think Alexis is in second, maybe. Alexis is definitely in second. How far out from first? I'm pretty close, I think. Nice. These are not official because they always change it. So it's uh, Alexis in second, uh, four points out from first. So she's <gasps> having a great weekend. 
we know her though. She's not, she's not done. Uh, and then we have faith is in 22nd place and Allison's in 23rd place. Shout out to Allison. Annalise is in 29th place right now on the male side. They made some moves today. I know Evan yeah, they did. did great. Yeah. Matthias is in 14th. Nice. Evan is in 15th place right now. Nice. So both battle between the boys. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Well, <laughs> who's going to win? <laughs> should give him we should, uh, we should poke the bear tomorrow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, Matthias, I heard Evan was talking shit, man. <laughs> and then let's, the team is in fifth place right now, but it's a crazy tie. It's, so this it's is a log jam right there. Yeah. It, it's yeah. one of those where, so fourth, fifth, and sixth are all tied at 295 points, but from fourth place to seventh place, there is only a 15 point gap. No, even third, right? Cause yeah. third's only like oh, five yeah, points sorry. of them. I should say that third place yeah. through seventh place is a, t- there's 20 points separating third and seventh. My so, heart can't handle yeah. it. Every, everything's up for grabs tomorrow. But I think again, like going back to that point that Mike made, that's the position you want to be in. Yeah. You know, that's what you yeah. live for. That's why you're competing, put the pressure on. And if you don't want that moving. pressure, you shouldn't be playing the game. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. Play a different game. Chris. Great place to wrap it up. Different boys. days, same game. Same game. Different yeah. game, same Different day. Game syndicate.